Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this public meeting of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. We have one item on the agenda this morning, and that is a decisional meeting on the, dis on the staff's recommendations for amendments to the Commission's fireworks regulations. We have staff members with us here this morning in case that there are any questions before we take a vote. The CPSC staff members at the table are Dr. Rodney Valeri. Did I say that right? I, uh, it's Valier. Valier. Dr. Andrew Statnick, and, uh, who is the Associate Executive Director for Lab Sciences, and Ms. Meredith Kelch, Office of General Counsel. So welcome to all of you, and thank you for being here. And thank you for um, really, uh, I know we've all had questions over the last year, year and a half, two years, and I appreciate your availability to, to answer those questions. Each commissioner may have up to five minutes for staff questions, and we'll go multiple rounds if necessary. Following questions for staff, we will turn to consideration of staff's recommendations. So I will begin uh, with the round of questions, and I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Adler? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, and I just wanted to show everybody that this has been a weighty issue, if nothing else, uh, um, physically and metaphysically. And I only really have one question, and that's just, uh, I forgot where things stand with the DOT standard. Has DOT now officially uh, developed a standard that reflects what the APA requirements are for fireworks? Um, to my knowledge, DOTs, they put out a no notice of proposed rulemaking which is similar to what the pre, uh, staff proposed in this <coughs> briefing package. It's currently in the comment period, which closes October 15th, I believe. So, so the DOT reflects what is in the staff briefing package, which would mean allowing a contamination level of metallic compounds up to 1%. So the updated APA standard 87-1, which is what DOT is now proposing to mm -hmm. incorporate by reference in place of 87-1, um, includes a 1% contamination allowance in the appendix to the APA standard. The appendix specifically has a statement saying it is not incorporated by reference by DOT. So given the short nature of the NPR DOT put out, it's not clear whether they would be explicitly incorporating by reference that limit or sort of indirectly by incorporating by reference the APA 87-1A standard, which includes that in a non-required appendix. That is a brilliant exposition of the law. It adds to my general confusion about this, but I very much appreciate it. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you. Commissioner Kay? No questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Biacco? I do. Thank you. Um, at the, we were all here about this time last year, and at the end of that hearing, I had asked, um, uh, I said I would be interested in getting some more data because at that time, uh, my understanding was that we had talked to 20 or 30 people following up from some of the NIST data that we had, and that um, I was hoping that we um, could get more data because, and I'm, I'm reading from the transcript, because at this point, uh, it strikes me as a lot of the recommendations that were made are based on a very small data point. I think I counted 26 times that the staff used either cannot quantify, unquantifiable, and so forth. And so I was hoping that we would get more data. Have we gathered any more data since the last time we met here? No, we have not. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, and thank you for holding the meeting this morning. Um, I just want to thank staff for all the hard work that they've put into this. Uh, it's it's voluminous, and uh, clearly a lot of effort has gone into preparing the briefing package that's come up. I have no questions at this time, and I'm going to reserve the right to offer a, a comment for the record at some point later on. Uh, but uh, having having no questions right now, I think we can keep this moving. Thank you. Having heard no further questions, staff is dismissed. Uh, that was easier than probably you anticipated. And again, just to uh, comment on behalf of all my colleagues, thank you for all of your work on this package. Run as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I move that we consider the staff's recommendation for a final rule as reflected in the briefing package. 
Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, I, I wish to explain one point about my motion that is before the commission. If we approve the staff's recommendation for a final rule today, then the Office of General Counsel will prepare the text of a Federal Register notice. It is my understanding that the text of the Federal Register notice would return to the commission for a further vote. Under our rules, however, there would be limitations on the extent to which that text could be modified. Therefore, I understand that one or more commissioners may wish to amend my motion so that there is more flexibility to change the text of the final rule. Is there an amendment to that effect? Uh, there is, but before I offer it, Madam Chair, if I could just seek a, a clarification, what would the limitations be for the commission? So it sounds like we would definitely see it again and we would definitely vote on it again. I'm just not clear what the limitations would be. If somebody could explain that, please. We could have general counsel, rather than me giving you my opinion, we'll ask general counsel to opine. Um, to briefly summarize, the limitations are that the vote on the Federal Register notice would not be of a substantive nature so as to change the underlying action of the commission. And you don't have to give us legal advice, obviously, and I appreciate that, but I'm, I, I guess I'm saying as a statement that that's because of the commission's uh, decision-making procedure is a specific provision in there. Is that what's guiding this? Um, that is, one of the decision-making procedures says that the Federal Register notices are, and other similar documents are implementing documents and not decision-making documents. So, um, so what the decision-making procedures attempt to do is to provide a bright line between what a decision-making document is and what an implementing document is. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hans. I appreciate that clarification. And then, uh, Madam Chair, in light of that, I would... Move to amend your motion. And should, would you like me to read the yes, amendment? That the, the amendment that I would offer is staff is directed to prepare a draft final rule, Federal Register notice for commission consideration that includes all of staff's recommendations in the briefing package dated September 26, 2018. The draft final rule Red Federal Register notice shall not be treated as an implementing document, notwithstanding sections. 2L and 10A of the Commission decision-making procedures. Thank you, Commissioner Kay. I will recognize you for three minutes to introduce your motion, and then I will ask for a second. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. I don't need. I don't think I need three minutes. I'm not even sure I need 30 seconds. Basically, I would just prefer that if the Commission were to see this again, that we would have the full rights to consider this package as any other package that's in front of the commission, especially because it's a final rule that, as any final rule, could be subject to further um, action in the courts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kay. Um, is there a second? Second. Having heard a second, we will now move to consideration of Commissioner's Kay, Commissioner Kay's amendment. Each commissioner will have five minutes to address the amendment. And if you have any questions regarding uh, the uh, amendment, you may yield their time to Commissioner Kay to, um, for an immediate answer. Otherwise, we'll return back to Commissioner Kay at the end, and he may address any of the questions. I have no questions. Thank you. Commissioner um, Adler? Uh, just a quick comment. I approve uh, and concur with the sentiment that Commissioner Kay's expressed. Uh, this is a very controversial package. I'm not sure we're going to get a majority uh, vote today, but the fact is even if we did, uh, this is one of those issues where if we got more data, as Commissioner Biacco suggests, we might want to re-examine our assumptions in this, but it does seem to me that we should not tie our own hands in further consideration of the package, so I uh, do support Commissioner Kay's uh, amendment. Thank you. Commissioner Biacco? I'm still confused, and I'll tell you why. I'm looking at the vote sheet. And so the first page of the vote sheet says, if the commission votes to issue a final rule, the Office of the General Counsel will prepare and submit for the commission approval a federal register no notice, notice for the final rule. And then here are our choices for voting. Approve the final rule, as recommended by the staff's package. That doesn't, in my mind, doesn't square. Another choice is approve the issuance of a final fireworks rule with the following changes. 
do not approve the issuance of a final rule or take other action. I'm having trouble squaring the choice of approving a final rule and putting it in the federal register. Is that directed to me? It's directed to anybody who can answer or help me with my confusion. Okay, well, why don't I start, and then if somebody else wants to jump in, because I'm going to explain it vis-a-vis -vis my motion or my amendment, and if somebody else wants to explain the larger procedure, that's fine. So from my understanding, what we are doing today supersedes what's on that yellow paper, because that was drafted and gave us different choices, and we're considering something that's a binary choice in essence, or would be under the motion that was presented by... Chairman Burkle. Wait, let me stop you. So sure, when was it superseded? Because this is still the same piece of paper that I had from a year ago, and we haven't done a thing since a year ago except schedule this this hearing. So that's what I'm confused. Where's yeah. the superseding? Yeah, I think it's just the difference of when we try to vote by ballot versus voting in person here. It's just the sequencing of the votes has to be different because you can't just take a menu of choices and just sign your name to one of them. So it's the same substantive issue. We just have to amend that process to deal with voting in a decisional as to voting on paper. So what we're trying to do, I believe, is have a vote today in the decisional consistent with sitting here up on the dais that allows for an up-down choice on whatever is in front of us, either with or without amendments. But every vote we take is one up-down choice on one single question as opposed to having a menu of questions. I understand that, but we had this very, we were supposed to vote the last time, was my understanding, on this set of choices. That hasn't changed. I've been giving nothing new, and now I come today expecting to vote on these choices to hear that it's been superseded, and we're going to do something differently, and I don't know where that came from. Yeah, and I'm and wondering like said, if I, that I, is you know, going to be sustainable at all. I, I just think it's the difference, like I said, uh, between trying to work a ballot sheet or a sheet where we vote on paper versus having to fit it into a decision. I don't think it's anything more than that from my perspective, but if somebody else wants to jump in, they certainly can. I would only offer that um, we have before us staff's recommendations for a final rule. If we vote up or down on the package, then we vote up or down on accepting staff's recommendations. And the, what's here before us this morning is when the package came up, it didn't have a federal register notice. So I think that is where some of the confusion is. We're voting that that federal register notice for the final rule come back to the commission. And it's my understanding your amendment is will provide the commission the ability to have a look at and perhaps have more the ability to uh, engage and to make changes in that federal Correct. register notice, whereas the current mem my motion would not allow that flexibility. Correct. Okay. If, if that's the distinction, um, th that, I heard you. I have no questions. Thank you. Mr. K, is there anything you wish to add to your uh, amendment? No. Thank you, Madam Chair. At this time, we will take a vote on Commissioner K's amendment. Um, as he uh, directed staff to prepare a final rule, I won't reread it, but uh, we all have it before us. Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner K? Yes. Commissioner Biacco? No. Commissioner Feldman? No. And I vote no. The no's are three, the ayes are two. Commissioner K's amendment is not passed. Are there any other amendments? Uh, are there any other amendments uh, before? or motions before the commission. So at this time we will vote on the my uh, underlying motion and the package that is before us. Uh, Commissioner Adler, how do you vote? Yes. Commissioner Kay? I'm gonna abstain. Commissioner Biacco? No. Commissioner Feldman? No. And I vote no. Uh, the no's are three, the ayes are one, and the abstention by Commissioner K is one. So the uh, package before us does not uh, pass, and there will be no federal register notice because so what has uh, taken place here this morning, there will be no federal register notice. Commissioner K's amendment did not pass, so it is not part of the discussion, but since the underlying motion failed as well. There will be no federal register notice coming to the commission. 
We will now um, take time for closing argument or closing statements. If anyone has them, Commissioner Adler. Uh, I don't have much of a closing statement other than I wanted to reiterate my great appreciation to staff and I also want to express my appreciation to the various stakeholders that have come in to advance with great intensity and passion uh, their perspectives on this. It is not the case that, at least as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure my colleagues as well, haven't looked at this, haven't pondered it, haven't deliberated at great length and agonized over what the proper course of action is. This is just not an easy decision. I certainly respect the views of my colleagues who voted no, and uh, this will be something that I hope at some point in the not too distant future we will revisit. But again, I just want to thank everybody who participated in this and let you know we really did take what you said seriously. Thank you, Commissioner Adler. Commissioner Kay. No statements. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Biacco. Um, not really a closing statement, but um, I, I would note that I cannot support this package because I think it is not only substantively but procedurally deficient. However, I do want to note that, um, like Commissioner Adler, I, I studied this probably more than any other issue since I've been at the CPSC um, and really struggled to find a way to move forward what is conceptually perhaps a very good uh, point. It, there just was not, in my opinion, enough science to back it. I will also point out that uh, in my meetings with um, uh, all of the stakeholders uh, that participated, there are some points in the staff's um, package that everyone agrees on. Um, and I would like to see, hopefully, that the stakeholders will move forward with a voluntary standard or at least put into place the things that they agree on, uh, despite the fact that the way the package came up to us, um, I, I cannot support it, at least in its current, uh, its current state. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Biacco. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you. I have no additional comments at this time, but would want to reiterate uh, my statement earlier about uh, my deep appreciation for all of the hard work that staff has put in on this. Thank you. Thank you again, uh, as heard by my colleagues, uh, to the staff for all of their work on this package. And to Commissioner uh, Adler's point, this is an issue that uh, we've had a tremendous amount of engagement from the stakeholders. They've provided a lot of clarity on this issue. We had a public hearing on this issue. And it is not one that any one of us took lightly or didn't, um, didn't understand what was trying to be accomplished. And uh, so I just want to thank all of the stakeholders for their role, for all of their feedback, for taking the time to come meet with us as well. Thank you to the Office of the Secretary, Office of the Executive Director, Office of General Counsel, and to Rock Grant, our audiovisual specialist, for facilitating this hearing. At this time, we will conclude the public meeting of the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission. Thank you very much.